Hello everyone, thanks for joining the webinar today. My name is Emily Bradley and I am with the MEDIT Education Training and Support Team. And today we were going to be covering smart stitching, correct scan path and filling the major holes. So to start with, we're going to um, look at the, the smart feature, smart stitching. In order to access smart stitching in your menu here, go to settings and you can scroll down here, you can see smart stitching right here. Now this can be turned on or off by clicking this little slider here. So we're going to turn our smart stitching on at this point in time. You can see I previously scanned a maxilla here and we're going to work on the mandible right now. Now in the past, while using 3D scanning a video recording, it is important to perform a seamless scanning without losing any focus of the camera during the acquisition of the scan. This process is highly influenced by the proficiency of the user and the intraoral condition of the patient. However, now with smart stitching, it's no longer necessary. So we're going to cover a little bit how smart stitching works and you're able to skip around in the mouth just a little bit. The information and data will be saved and then it will be joined by the software. Now, we're also going to talk a little bit more about scan path. And what I wanted to point out to you right here is Medit provides these little tools and it talks about basic scan path. Right here, you can see zigzagging across the incisal edge and going back on the occlusal surface. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my scanner and I'm going to press the blue start stop button on the scanner to scan. Now I'm going to do a basic scan path here first. And we're not going to worry about speed because what we want to do is just talk about the process. I'm going to come along the occlusal surface and, and I want to pick up that incisal edge my first time through. See how I zigzag or kind of rock across that incisal edge. And I'm going to go ahead and rock back. I'm going to roll it in towards the buccal sulcus here. And what I try to tell people as they're scanning, try to anticipate getting um, scanning each surface one time. So you wanna pay attention to those interproximals as you're scanning, okay? Right now, for the sake of the webinar, we're gonna kind of rush through this a little bit so I'm not taking too much of your time. Go back on the lingual and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out on the buckle here. I like to pull the scanner out of the cheek on the buckle just because it allows me to have no cheek resistance when I'm actually going um, into the mouth. Sometimes when you push the scanner into the mouth on the buckle surface, you end up with a little cheek resistance. Okay, so not, not, not our best scan in the world, but here we go. We're going to go ahead and take the mouse. And again, we're in basic scan mode here. See any interproximal spaces that we want to pick up. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this file. So I can go in and fill in any of those interproximal spaces that I want to. What I'm going to do now is delete this and I'm going to um, show you how smart stitching works. So basic scan path, we come forward on the occlusal surface. We zigzag across that incisal edge. It's really important to establish that incisal edge prior to scanning the labial surface or the lingual surface. And then I come back here on the occlusal surface, okay? Out on the buckle, I'm gonna rotate over to the lingual here on, on, on um, the lingual surface on the way back and rotate and come over the buckle there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and delete this right now and we're gonna demonstrate smart stitching now. You saw that as I scanned this, it was one continuous movement. Um, now that smart stitching is available, we can hop around a little bit more. So I'll pick up my model here. And again, typically I, I would like to scan in the mouth, but because I'm, I'm talking right now, it helps to scan on the model for the demos. I'm gonna go ahead and press start on my scanner. Okay, pick up that first tooth. Start scanning a little bit right through here. And really what I wanna do is just display the features of smart stitching. I'm gonna pick the scanner up now and I'm gonna start on another area. Okay, so I want you to see what happened and we're gonna kind of work through this a little bit slower. I'm scanning an entirely new area. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And then I can pick up the scanner again and start in a different area. And what you're gonna see here is the thumbnails that are collected on the lower left-hand side of the screen. Now you can have up to five thumbnails there. So as I work my way back, you're going to see how a thumbnail disappears and it actually joins the scan data up. Okay, so we're gonna keep scanning that area. I can stop at any point in time. Now what I wanna show you here, I can go from this data here that I've been scanning and I can switch it out to the other thumbnail on the side of the screen here. Obviously not a great scan, um, but we wanna show you how you can skip around a little bit. 
Now from here, I can start scanning based off of the thumbnail that I've just pulled up. So let's say I want to continue on back and I'm going to get the, some of this tissue back here. Now, as I come across, we're going to work our way forward here. The incisal edge, I still, even with smart stitching, I use that zigzag motion across that incisal edge and boom, there you go. That um, thumbnail on the left-hand side will disappear as soon as it sees where the image meets up. So what this allows the user to do is to hop around in the mouth a little bit more and still pick up reliable data. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this right now. We're gonna go ahead and scroll out here and let's say I'm going to, let's, let's delete some of this right here, just get rid of part of this, um, this scan. So I'm just gonna use one of my trimming tools and we'll get rid of this area here. And what I'm gonna do is actually we'll click off the tool to proceed. And remember, if you forget to click off any of your tools and you get back in the patient's mouth and you start to scan, your first blue click will turn the tool off. The second click on the blue button will actually, um, it'll start the scan. So I'm gonna start on a posterior now. So I'm not gonna start where we left off. So the thumbnail can be saved there. Okay, so we're gonna just grab this, this posterior tooth here. Now, if I tried to move past um, this next scan stage, it will not allow me to go to another scan stage. For instance, I'll go ahead and show you here. If I, if I wanna do the occlusion now, it's not going to allow me to move past this scan stage until I delete either the thumbnail or I delete all of it together here at the bottom of the screen. So, or we just align the data. So let's go ahead and align the data right now. I'll start where I left off. And then you'll see that from there, you can easily move and it's going to marry that information up. So it does allow you to skip around while you're scanning, um, still producing very high quality scans. I've got some interproximals there we need to get obviously. And again, I just wanna show you one more time here. Um, you know, when I'm working with a lot of people who are initially starting to scan, I like to get them doing the basic scan path. I think it's really vital that, you know, to prevent distortion, you're zigzagging across this incisal edge. Um, you're getting accurate information. Later, when you come back and scan the labial or lingual surface, it's really easy to throw information on the labial and lingual once that incisal edge has been established. So by going to menu here and then settings, this is where you're able to switch your smart stitching on or off at this point in time. Now, after we've talked a little bit about scan path, we've also talked about the smart stitching. What I wanna do really quickly is just demo for you what this looks like if we were to do this in um, remote control mode. I'm going to press on the, the white remote button below the blue button on the scanner. And again, it works exactly the same. Now we've got the model there already established, but smart stitching would be the same. And, and what it does nicely in remote control mode is you're actually eliminating um, the other icons on the screen. So you just have the model. Um, it's a little bit larger for you to view and it allows you to view this model without having to um, go back and touch your keyboard. So again, I'll just stop there. We've just added a little information and we know that we're not worried, too much worried about this. I've got some open interproximals on the other side. And I'm going to leave those interproximals right now. Now we're going to talk a little bit about filling the major holes here. So in order to exit remote control mode, I can long hold the remote control button, as we learned from our past webinars, and I can either click right towards open settings, or I can just click left to exit. So now I'm back in basic scan mode right here. Now, it's really important to know that when you're filling holes, you wanna make sure the holes that you are allowing to be filled by the software are not in a vital area, such as on a prep, on a margin, on your contacts to a prep or the adjacent teeth. We wanna make sure if we're doing a restoration um, that those areas that we're providing to the laboratory are extremely accurate. Now, in some cases, if you had holes in your interproximals on this side in a prep over here, it's not going to be too important you know, for you to fill those holes. So we have a couple options here. If we were to say, and again, we don't even have our occlusion at this point in time, but let's say we were complete, this, plate, this case was complete, and we would like to um, finish up here. I can actually come up here to the top button 
if you hover over it again, like any icon on Medit, um, an explanation of what the icon for will pop up. I can go ahead and click here. And then from there, I'm given some options. So we've seen that this, this model here has um, a few holes in it, to say the least. So we've got this first option here. Again, if you hover over it, it'll explain what this option does. Um, this will process the data as is. So no holes being filled. It will leave the holes where they're at. And you can actually fill the holes later after it's been processed. Um, we'll be doing another webinar on that where you can go in and precisely fill different holes. Our next option right here is fill the major holes. So use this option to fill all the major holes in the scan data. Um, you can also use the reliability map to help you know which holes in which areas will be filled. The um, reliable areas will be expanded to cover the areas where the data was not required. So by clicking here, it will automatically fill any holes that were left in your model. And then if you move to this site, again, if you hover over it, this allows you to create a 3D printed model. So I'm just going to click here so you can see if you select that option, you can change the total height of the base to the, to the total height to the minimum. And then you can also select hollow or a non-hollow model and then base and then confirm. So you can actually, you have total control over how your printed model is going to look. So by canceling here, I can go back in here and I'm going to select fill major holes and then it will go into processing after that. And once you get into processing, you will see all the holes are completely filled. Again, I think it's really important as um, in dentistry to know that we wanna make sure that we're getting the full complete scan in areas where there are going to be restorations, where there's going to be margins, contacts, and so forth. Um, so keep that in mind as you choose to fill the holes. Always make sure you spend the time to really inspect your models for any areas that may have incomplete scan data. And again, like I just mentioned, some areas are not going to be super vital to producing a good 3, 3D model, but other areas are going to be required and needed during the restorative process. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful. We look forward to hearing from you um, and having you participate in our next webinar. And we'll talk to everyone later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.